Hello, legacy students, Marsh here. So today we're going to be talking about graphing and writing hyperbolas that have been translated. Um, you're going to want your conix foldable, a pen or a pencil, and then maybe a calculator just to do some simple math. Um, last time we met, we talked about parts of a hyperbola. They are still going to be present in this graph. So our center, last time we looked at these hyperbolas, was 0, 0. Today we're going to be moving them around. We still are going to have some vertices, we're still going to have those foci, and then we're also still going to have those asymptotes. However, we're just going to be moving things around and kind of picking them up and moving them. So first we have the equation, remember, x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Remember, it doesn't matter who has the bigger denominator. It, it depends on which letter shows up first in our equation. So since the x is first, we have a left and right opening hyperbola. A is always going to be under the first denominator, or always be the first denominator. It does not matter who has a bigger denominator. Our formula for C, of course, is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So yes, we are adding this time. Remember, our A value is still the vertex to the center, but our B value is going to be the vertices to the asymptotes. That's different than the ellipse. And then our C, of course, is our center to the focus for each of those. So those are not different than last time. It's just that the center is going to be moved around quite a bit. Let's try a problem. First thing I notice is the y is showing up first in this problem, which tells me that my hyperbolas will be opening up and down. I now need to identify my center. Now be very careful. The center is not 1, negative 4. It is because the y shows up first. We do need x to be in our order pair first. So I will have negative 4 comma 1 for a center there. So let's go ahead and graph that dot. 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1. That is my center right there. Um, my a value is the square root of the first denominator. So that's 5. b will be 3. Now, C, remember, we're going to add the 2. So 25 plus 9, that is 34. We're going to square root 34. I don't think 34 has a perfect square. It does not. So the square root of 34, well, that's got to be very, very close to 6. So I'm going to say like 5.8, roughly, right? Now, let's find our vertices. My vertices, I have to go up and down my A value from my center. So I'm going to go up and down 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's one vertex. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the other vertex. Let's write those ordered pairs out. It looks like this guy is at negative 4, comma, 6. And the other one is at negative 4, comma, negative 4. Notice, that is the center plus or minus four, 5 on the y value, because that's honestly what we did, right? We went plus or minus 5 on the y. I now need to find my asymptotes. So I'm going to go 3 left and right from the vertex, each of them. So 1, 2, 3... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I'm going to connect those through my center so I can draw out my asymptotes here. Just like that. Let's find the slope of those lines. So I looks like I'm going one, two, three, four, five. So my rise is five. 1, 2, 3 is my run. So my slope are plus and minus 5 thirds, right? Now, unlike when they were not translated, I just got to put 5 thirds x, right? That's because they had a center of 0, 0. These guys never, no longer have a center of 0, 0, so their y-intercept is not 0. And would you agree with me that this 
y-intercept of both these lines are going to be absolutely disgusting. Like we're talking decimals, we're talking fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these equations of these lines in translated form. Now remember the translated form, kind of like we've been doing translated form with all of our functions, is going to be inside the parentheses with the x, and I moved left 4 up 1. This is the ordered pair. The center is the ordered pair I want to identify. So I went left 4 and I went up 1. I'm going to use translated form of these linear equations so that way I don't have to write those gross, disgusting fractions that those y-intercepts would be. And finally, the foci. I'm going to go up and down 5.8, so roughly right there, and roughly right there. Then I'm going to draw in, whoop, that's a bad drawing, Marsh, the hyperbola can't go through the asymptote, there we go, right there and right there. And those ordered pairs for those foci. So I definitely have a x value of negative 4. I started at 1, and then I went up the square root of 34, and I went down the square root of 34. So I'm going to say I went up and down the square root of 34 for my ordered pair. Let's try number 4. I am not equal to 1. So let's divide by 64 so that this will be. So I will get x minus 1 squared over 64. Ooh, 16 over 64. How does that simplify? 1 fourth. Oh, I forgot. That's a minus. There we go. y plus 4 squared over 4 is equal to 1. So now the x shows up first. That means I am left and right. My center is 1, negative 4. So let's go ahead and graph that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the center right there. Okay. My a value is the square root of the first denominator, 8. The b value is the square root of second, so that would be 2. And then I'm going to add 64 plus 4. I am going to get the square root of 68 for C. Um, does 68 have? It does. It does have a perfect square. Um, square root of 4 times the square root of 17. So that is 2 square roots of 17. Um, square root of 68 is probably just a little bit more than 8. So like 8.3. Roughly, let's check it on the calculator here. Yeah, 8.2, 8.3. Um, vertices, I'm going to go from my center, left and right, 8. So I'm going to go 8 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is one vertex. Now 8 to the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight. Okay, and it looks like those ordered pairs should be 9, negative 4. That's the guy on the right. And the guy on the left, um, negative 7, negative 4. Now, again, remember that is plus or minus 8 on that x value of the center because that's technically what we did, right? Um, let's go find now the asymptotes. Again, I'm going to go B from the vertex. I'm going to go 2 up and down from the vertex, both of them. There we go. Now, somehow I need to go through those centers. This is going to be kind of a hard graph because it's very kind of stretched out. There we go. Not the best, but not the worst. Let's go ahead and write the equations of those asymptotes. I'm going to get y equals, what is the slope? Well, I went up 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I went over 2 over 8, so 1 fourth, right? 
because two over eight is equal to one fourth. And I started for a starting point that they both cross through of one negative four. So I'm going to say I went right one down four to write that equation. My foci, let's go to purple here. My foci are going to be 8.3, 8.2 left and right. So that's going to be right about there and right about there. And then graphing. I have a skinny little hyperbola is going on there. There we go. And my foci's ordered pairs, since I changed the x values, I went left and right, we're going to say we went 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 17, comma, negative 4 for those ordered pairs. Let's start working backwards now. Let's graph, or let's write the equation from given information. So they gave me a graph. Here's the things I need. I need the center. I need the A value and I need the B value. Those are the three things that I need to graph. The center, oh, they marked it. It's so nice of them. Let's go figure out that ordered pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, one, two, three. Eight, three is the center of that graph. Now, I need to find the A value. Remember, the A value is the center to a vertex. So that would be 1, 2. My A value is 2. Now, my B value is how far is my vertex to the asymptote. That looks like it's 1, 2, 3 is how far that's over. So my B value is 3. Let's write our hyperbola. I do need to take a minute though, because this doesn't have just one template. There's two different templates. It is an up and down, right? So that means the Y has to show up first in my template. So I'm going to put the Y first. There's a subtraction. My center, I have to flip it because the Y, the Y value has to be with the Y. But my denominator still is going to be squared of the A and squared of the B. No difference there. Kind of a little different, kind of a little weird, but bear with me. The next one, we are given vertices of negative 10, 12, and negative 10, 8, negative 8, and negative 12, and negative 18, negative 8. Oop, missed a comma there are the points on the asymptotes. So let's do a little sketch, shall we? So negative 10, 12 would be like up there. Negative 10, negative 8 would be like here. Oops. Um, negative 2, 12 would be right there. And negative 18, ooh, that's really far over there. Negative 8 would be like right there. So agree with me, the center has to be here, and we're going to go through those. These two things are going to go like that, and we're going to go whoop, 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 right? Something that looks like that. So it looks like this is a vertical. It's up and down. So that means my template is going to have a Y first. Um, I now need to find the center, the A value, and the B value. Center. Center is in the middle of the two vertices. So I'm going to do my midpoint formula. So negative 10 plus negative 10 divided by 2, 12 minus 8 divided by 2. I'm going to get a center of negative 10 comma. Ooh, 12 minus 8 would be 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my center is negative 10, 2. My A value then is my center to a vertex. It looks like it's a distance of 10, right? Because negative 10, 2 to negative 10, 12 is a distance of 10. Now my B value is how far is a vertex from an asymptote dot. So negative 10, 12 to negative 2, 12 is probably the easiest ones to figure out because they're on the same line, right? That would be a distance of 8. 
notice as well, this vertex to this ordered pair is also a distance of eight. So my B value is eight. I now can write my hyperbola's equation. Since it's up and down, my Y has to show up first in my template. Okay, Y minus two, X plus 10, because of I've, I have to flip that around, my A value is the first denominator, so that means it's 100. My B value, 64, because I have to square. Let's try number seven. They gave me vertices of 10, negative 8, 0, negative 8, and the foci of 18, negative 8, and negative 8, negative 8. Let's do some sketching. So, 10, negative 8 is down here, that's a vertex, and 0, negative 8 is right here. Foci of negative 18, negative 8, and negative 8, negative 8. So that means these graphs are doing something like this, right? So this tells me that this is a left and right. That lets me know that I will be able to put x first with my template. Let's now find the center the A value and the B value, because those are the three things we need, right? Center, I'm going to find the center of these two dots. Um, 10, 0, 10 plus 0 divided by 2 is 5. Negative 8 plus negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 8. So my center is 5, negative 8. I could have also done that with the foci. That works too. My A value, remember, that is center to vertex. So 5, negative 8 to 10, negative 8 is a distance of 5. My B value is vertex to asymptote. They didn't give me that information. How am I going to find the B? Well, they did give me my C value, though, right? Because my C value is the center to the focus. So 5, negative 8 to 18, negative 8 is a distance of 13. And I know there's a formula that relates A, B, and C. So that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I can find B that way, right? So 25 plus something is equal to 169, which is squaring C. So if I subtract my A, 169 minus 25 is 144. So that must mean my B is 12. Now let's write the equation. We said it's left and right, so that means my X is going to show up first in my equation. I'm just writing out my template. There we go. Again, subtraction in the middle. That's how we say it's a hyperbola. It's going to be X minus 5 y plus 8, that's my center. My a value goes under the first. My b value goes under the second. One more for the night. So I'm going to write the equation given the points of the, on the asymptotes of, negative, of 12, 2, and 6, negative 6, and the foci of 9, 3, and 9, negative 7. Let's do a little sketch. So I have 12... 2, actually 12 probably should be a little further out, shouldn't it? Let's do a little. 12, 2, there we go. And then 6, negative 6. And then my foci are at 9, 3, and 9, negative 7. Well, here's some strange things going on here. I'm going to go to the blue. I don't know the vertex, right? That's kind of weird because this is connecting. These are, this is my asymptotes. I know that there has to be some kind of hyperbolas showing up, right? From this, I do know this is up and down. That is one thing I can definitely glean from this information. I, I don't, I can find a center. Center has to be in the middle of the foci. So let's find my center. And then we can maybe find our A, maybe find our B. Okay, so my center 
I definitely know is in the middle of the foci. Do not find the middle of those asymptotes. My center looks to be 9, uh, 3 plus a negative 7 is negative 4, divided by 2 is negative 2. Okay, so that's right about there. It's my center. Don't know my A value. Can't find that. My B value. Ugh, can't find the B value either because I kind of need a vertex, don't I? But my C value, I can find. I know 9, negative 2 to 9, negative 7 is a distance of 5. Missing a lot of information here. Well, if I have, I know the vertex has to be, have a x value of 9, right? Because the center, the vertex, and a focus have to be in line with one another. So I know that my x value of my vertex right here is at 9. And can't I just say it's in line with that dot on the focus there? So if this is in line with that dot on the asymptote, wouldn't that be a 9, 2 for this vertex? And then if I went right here, this would be 9, negative six on there because this I have to be in line here and this value has to be in line with this dot so then I can find my b value so I know my a value is my or excuse me my vertex distance from my center looks to be a distance of four I can also assume that my center or my vertex to my asymptote is a distance of 3 because 9, 2 to 12, 2 is a distance of 3. So now I can write the equation of this hyperbola. Y needs to be first because it is a up and down. I'm going to be equal to 1. Just can't see it over there. Um, it's going to be y plus 2, x minus 9. A has 16, so that's under the first denominator. And then my b is 9. This one is definitely kind of strange. You kind of had to reason your way through it. It's because we need to know that this is definitely on the same line as that asymptote, or they're near one another in that regard. And that is the end of this video. Definitely hyperbolas, when they've been translated, especially with those asymptote equations and then doing the writing, definitely take a little bit of practice. So we will work on it in class. And during that, until then, I hope to see you later, Sabres.